ARC recently held the first 50 Forward Forum focusing on sustainability in partnership with the Blank Foundation. Seattle Mayor Greg Nichols was the featured speaker. He shared his thoughts with Atlanta residents about what cities must do to sustain environmental integrity for future generations. ARC's planning director, Tom Wyand, had a chance to sit down with Mayor Nichols to talk about these and other issues. Mayor Nichols, we're really privileged that you came to Atlanta and shared your thoughts with us about what's going on in Seattle and how we can learn from, from your efforts to try to improve sustainability in our community. Well, it's been my pleasure to visit this great city. Good. Well, we're pleased to have you here. Uh, I wonder if you could start by just telling us what sustainability really means to you. It means that the way that we do things, whether it's heating our homes or uh, powering our businesses or moving people and goods and services, the way we do it today uh, isn't just good for us today, but is good for that seven-year-old when, when he's an adult and is good for his children when they grow up. Mm -hmm. It's doing things in a way that we can continue over time without uh, destroying the, the fabric of, of our planet. To be really sustainable, it sounds like it's a global problem, and in fact it is. You, however, have taken leadership with, among the, the mayors through the U.S. Conference of Mayors here to try to bring that down to the local level. Why did you think that was important to deal with it at, at that stage instead of massive global initiatives? Well, it, it ultimately is going to require global effort, but it really was the fact that the United States was refusing to participate. We perceived this problem in our own northwest way. It was uh, coming out of a very dry winter that we had, and we rely on snowpack in our mountains to give us water and electric power. So when it's dry in the mountains, no snow, uh, we have to figure out how we're going to make up for that. So it suddenly became a problem that wasn't just somewhere far in the future or far away. It was something that was here and now for us. So that's why we uh, decided that our community needed to get involved. As, as I understand that you have some 830 cities that have signed on to, to this, this initiative. Uh, to try to reduce greenhouse gases to, what, 1990 levels? 7% 7 below 1990, below 1990 levels. levels. That's, That's what the Kyoto Protocol would have called yeah. for the United States to do if yeah. we had signed on. Yeah, how did you pull it off among all of these cities, which are obviously a very diverse group of people, politically, geographically, uh, all sorts of economic conditions different. How did you bring them together? Well, it, it, it's been an interesting story because I think each city has come to it in a different way. For me, it was the snowpack in the Cascade Mountains. Uh, we saw uh, fairly early a lot of cities in Florida and the Gulf Coast begin to sign on. And it was as the hurricanes were uh, coming more frequently and with much more ferocity than in the past, they saw something changing. We saw cities in the Plain States and the Midwest start to sign on when they had a drought or a, a heat wave. So people are perceiving that something is changing. They believe that uh, something is at risk and they're willing to roll up their sleeves and figure out how to protect it. And, uh, and, and, and that's really how it's resonated across the country. That's great. Uh, what do you think some of the more simple things that a city can do to, to begin the effort, uh, as to look at themselves and think about how they might change? Are there some initial steps that you think uh, are important for community to, to, to face? The first step, I think, is to lead by example. So we as a city government decided that we would figure out how to reduce our own emissions. And, and we've now reduced those by 60% from 1990 levels. So we showed a big organization can make changes in how they do business to, to achieve this goal. Then the second thing was to engage the leadership around the community, business and civic leadership, uh, environmental communities, uh, and uh, to get their best ideas. And now we're out in every neighborhood with a grassroots campaign. So the message to each individual is your personal action in your home, your business, your community can make a difference. And multiply that by the 600,000 people in Seattle, multiply that by the 830 cities, and you've made a big impact on the future of the planet. Mm -hmm. Now those are all personal actions. It seemed to me that they can really activate individuals uh, individual uh, interest and activity. Are there some major policies that, that you think or perhaps that you've pursued from, from in, in Seattle that, that shape some of the bigger issues in terms of development and behavior that, sure. that address sustainability? As a western city, um, we were really built up around the automobile um, and uh, as a result of that, transportation is a huge part of our greenhouse gas emissions. 
So we're building a light rail system. The first link out to the airport will be open uh, next uh, June. Uh, and the second link out to our university will be under construction by the end of the year. We built a streetcar, mm -hmm. our initial modern streetcar, uh, connecting downtown and, and uh, a very vibrant and, and fast-growing neighborhood called South Lake Union. Uh, we have encouraged smart growth. Uh, we have a very good employment center in our downtown, but relatively few people living downtown. So we've very much encouraged more residential development right in our downtown and, and surrounding it so that people's toughest transportation decision is what color shoes do I wear on my walk to work. Mm -hmm. So we've built really an ethic around the idea of conserving resources rather than consuming them. Mm -hmm. what, what have you done to sort of spur citizens to action? Are you finding... Uh, neighborhood groups gelling around these issues, or are you finding citizen activism is 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 becoming a part of, of your citywide program? I think that that's probably the place that gives me the most hope, is that um, rather than give up and say this problem is so big, what is the point of my getting involved? Which was one of the initial reactions once people accepted that global warming is happening and it's basically human caused. People instead are, are understanding that it is my personal actions, how I live my life and how I change that, that is going to ultimately make the difference. And, and I think that's a tremendously um, encouraging uh, uh, step. So uh, I think that that grassroots effort, and again, when you set an example and that's emulated, the power of that example is, is extraordinary. Well, if you were giving some advice, as you have an opportunity to right now, to the people of the Atlanta and the Atlanta region, what, what would be your sort of key message right now about how we begin to deal with the issues of sustainability? Well, my key message wouldn't be around any particular element, whether it's you know changing light bulbs or or uh, uh, reducing uh, shower flows. It really would be how does the community come together, accept the fact that we have a responsibility and accept the fact that if we step up to this, we are going to make a difference for our children and for their children. And, and that's the best, I think that's the best thing that we can give to the future. Good. Well, I think on that note, we again, we really appreciate your being here with us in Atlanta and taking some time to talk to us about your efforts. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.